did you prepare it for labor? How do you stay relaxed? That's a good question. When you find out, let me know. Did you poop? What's it like to birth your placenta and did you consume it? Is there anything that you would change about your birth? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because I am going to be talking all about labor and birth. And to me, that's kind of an exciting topic, which might sound weird, but I wanted to sit down and do a Q and A, which I don't really do a lot on this channel, actually, now that I think about it, but I had such a positive response from sharing my whole birth story video. If you guys haven't seen that, I will leave that link so you guys can go check that out. But I had such a positive, you know, response from that. I had a couple people asking questions down in the comment section. So I was like, let me do like a Q and A all about labor, birth, share a bit about um, my personal like opinions on it. And just like in general, it doesn't have to be about like my specific birth, but just like talking about stuff in general. I also like put a little questionnaire box on my Instagram a while back, like a month ago. So this video has been needing to be filmed for a long time, but having a baby who's going through a very fussy stage in life, it's hard to find time to sit down and film. Dagan's keeping her occupied right now so I can finally sit down and film this. So I saved some questions that people asked a long time ago. So I, I'm sorry that this is getting out so much later, but better late than never, right? All right, we're gonna dive right into this. First question is, how did you prepare for labor? I'm not sure like if they're meaning physically, mentally. So I'll just kind of share like my process of how I prepared for that. I would say the number one thing I recommend that you do is take a labor and delivery birthing pregnancy course if you possibly can with your partner is a definite plus because they should be in the loop too we took a birthing class that was like i think a six week class it was called birth believers it was a local thing here in hawaii that some midwives put on it was free and it was so informative they went through everything i think they went through like the entire like pregnancy of what you're going to go through they went through labor, they went through the, the stages of labor, or what your uterus does, what your cervix does. They did diagrams, they they showed us little techniques and breathing, and it was a very in-depth course, and I found it to be so informative. We watched videos, we learned about different cultures of birth, and learning how to basically have a beautiful experience within birth, because I definitely feel like society makes birth out to be very scary and fearful and traumatic. And while birth may not always be the most pleasant experience, I feel like just like as a society, we just view it in such a negative light and it is such a beautiful thing. And so they really just like focused on that and they share different perspectives of if you're gonna give birth in a hospital or in a, well, they don't have birthing centers in Hawaii, but at home and what to expect if you're gonna be in a hospital and how to advocate for yourself and things to do at home and techniques that your partner can do to help you get through it. And it was just very informative. Another thing that I prepared for is like postpartum things that you can prepare for, which is like getting meals ready, getting like postpartum things for like diapers and icicle pads and that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm gonna plan actually do a video all about postpartum, which I really, really want to do. I've been wanting to do this for a while because I feel like it is so important to talk about postpartum. It is not talked about <laughs> the doors in our house shake. It is not talked about enough. Um, and I really want to just like share my postpartum story. So I will get to that. Hopefully that'll be the next video that comes up. That's what my goal is. But anyways, besides all that, uh, this probably isn't the answer that you're looking for, but it's, it's hard to prepare for labor, uh, cause you don't really, know how it's necessarily going to turn out. I mean, you can prepare as much as you can mentally, physically. I would say like throughout most of your pregnancy, if you can try to stay active, doing lots of walks, don't like strain yourself, but doing lots of walks, stretching, keeping yourself loose. Uh, if you have like any birthing books that you want to read, there is a book by, I don't have it up here, but it's by, hold on one second. This isn't the book, but it's by the same author. It's by Ina Mae Gaskin, and it's this is the guide to breastfeeding, but she has another book that's the guide to giving birth, I think is what it's called. I'll leave it linked down below. It was so informative. So I would highly recommend um, reading that, whether you're gonna give birth in a hospital or in your home or in a birthing center, just like having any type of knowledge, I would recommend having, if you can't afford a doula, 
so that you can like, like be prepared for someone to like be with you and advocate for you, I think is really important. I mean, you obviously have your spouse there and whatnot or your partner or whatever, but having somebody who's knowledgeable in birthing and that can help advocate for what you want, I think is a great way to help prepare you for birth. Also, don't do what we did and keep putting stuff off, like getting your postpartum stuff ready and, and whatnot, because I felt like I had all this time in the world to prepare for labor and a uh, baby girl came two and a half weeks early and I was very much unprepared. Like so unprepared, I didn't have diapers when she was born. It was, yeah. I'll share all about that in the postpartum video that I'm gonna film. Next question is, why did you decide to do a home birth and would you do it again? So I, Never thought in a million years that I would ever do a home birth, maybe a birthing center, but just like never a home birth. I just, that just was freaky to me. And then the pandemic happened and it started off seeing all these stories about women being separated from their partners and their spouses during birth and having to give birth alone. I know that wasn't the case for everybody, but I was hearing stories about that and it freaked me out. I was seeing women having to give birth and push with masks on, which I think is so, unbelievably asinine and I can't believe like like I can't believe that any woman would have to give birth with wearing a mask and restricting her breathing during the most physically exertive event in her life I think that is so wrong on so many levels I, no and so the thought of that I was like absolutely not and just like all these things that hospitals were doing like to I get they're trying to keep people safe but it was just like in my mind so messed up and I was so scared to go through anything like that so it caused me to stop and pause and be like mm, I don't know want that and then after like thinking about that it caused me to go down like a rabbit hole of just learning about natural birth and home birthing and just the freedom that you have at home or in a birthing center that you might not have in a hospital whether that's like the positioning of giving birth and just like the freedom of being able to walk around and eat food and just like stuff like that I just I wanted to be able to like give birth and just like be in the comfort of my home and not have to worry about like transferring because for me I had a really rough postpartum so the thought of having to like get out of my bed and get into a car a couple days after giving birth I would have not been able to do that I was just like it was rough for me so I just really wanted to be able to make my own decisions and be empowered and not feel pressured by the big hospital system and there's so many other reasons behind that but yeah i just wanted to be in the comfort of my own home and oh also have the people that i wanted to have at my birth and not have like random people that i don't know be coming in and out i wanted to be able to rest and all that kind of thing um i'm not against hospital births i know so many people that have given birth in hospital and had amazing experiences i think that should be every woman's choice to be able to where they want to give birth and oh i would definitely do it again like, I, I don't think I could ever go to a hospital unless for whatever reason I had to transfer for medical reasons, but I would never want to actually give birth in a hospital after having such a great experience in my home. When did you know you were going into labor? <laughs> um, that took me a minute to figure out because obviously I've never gone into labor before, but if you listen to my birth story, Dag and I had gone on a walk and on our way down the hill from our walk, my pants were like soaked and so I began to question like did my water break did my mucus plug come out I wasn't really sure but I just kind of had like a gut feeling like could this be it and then when I started getting cramping feelings and whatnot I was like am I just having cramps or is this contractions like I wasn't really sure and then as they got more painful a little bit more consistent I called my doctor and her assistant midwife and I kind of talked them through that they listened to me on the phone and we're like keeping track of the timing for like the first couple ones and they kind of like gave me an idea like yeah I think you're going into labor so generally you'll feel like cramping sensation like and for me mine came on like a super sudden I skipped early labor completely and went straight into active labor so once my contractions started like they were they were pretty rapid I didn't have the whole like contraction and they came like 20 minutes later and then they stopped for a day and I was able to rest like they came and they came like one after the other um so that's kind of how i knew i was in labor and when i like couldn't really talk when they were peaking i was yeah it was intense next question is how long was my labor my labor was about seven hours which is such a blessing because i don't know if i could have done it for any longer and i know so many women go through labor for like 20 like days on end and seven hours just seemed like a lifetime to me i think that was also because i had back labor uh, it was really intense. Not saying that like normal labor, like where you feel like cramps in the front is not intense because having giving birth and labor all around is obviously intense, but there is something about having back labor that is just like, 
just to cut them up. It's just, it's just next level and it's very intense. And so I don't know how I would have managed to go through labor longer than I did, but it was seven hours long. And looking back, it seems like it went by really quickly. Since I did have back labor and my baby was born sunny side up, my team told me that was very surprising to hear like how short my labor was because generally with sunny side up babies, they do tend to have longer labors, which if you're going into hospital, they tend to want to intervene because it's taking so long. So I was very lucky with how quickly she came. Next question is how painful is labor? You know, this I feel like is an individual type of question because everybody deals with pain on such a different level. Some people can't deal with it and they have to get epidural. And at, like before I gave birth, I was always like, why would anyone get epidural? Like that, like risk versus reward and that type of thing. And like the, 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 the needle going to the back, I'm like, oh, why would you want to do that? When I was in the thick of it, going through my contractions, I was like, I'll never judge another woman again for wanting to get an epidural. I felt like an idiot for not getting an epidural. I was like, why would I put myself through this? Looking back, I would I would do it all over again. I'm crazy, I know. I, it's hard, it's so hard to explain the pain that you feel when you're in labor. Cause like I said, everyone deals with it differently. I had mine intensity in my back. So it felt like I just had like intense, like 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 intense back pain and it was very sensitive to the point where it's like anytime I would breathe and like expand my diaphragm it would hurt so it hurt to breathe it hurt to push and like I said back labor was just like another level of intensity so it wasn't fun and so anytime I would come down from my contraction I took those like that minute or that couple minutes to really just like tune everything out and just really kind of just like like relax and breathe to kind of amp up for the next one. I would almost say that like my contractions were more intense than actually pushing her out and dealing with the ring of fire, which I know people often say that the ring of fire is like really crazy, but I would say like it was the other way around for me. So yeah. Somebody asked, how do you stay relaxed? <laughs> That's a good question. When you find out, let me know. <laughs> I, everybody's different with this. Uh, it, it's hard. It's easy to say like, oh, just stay relaxed and breathe through it and everything. But when you're in the thick of it, sometimes it can be so hard it's also a mental game. Like I feel like labor and going through your contractions is a real mental game. If you get up in your head, it, it you can spiral. And there was a couple of times that I did spiral and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And when I first started going through contractions before my team got here, I remember like sobbing and being like, Dagan, I can't do this. And a lot of it was because like it came on so fast. I feel like I mentally like wasn't prepared for how quickly my, my contractions were gonna come on. So it was hard for me to stay relaxed, but there's different methods that you can do. There's, we, I had a birthing pool, which I didn't end up unfortunately getting birth in, but being able to labor in it really helped me to relax because of the hot water. Having someone like pour water on my back, the hip squeeze type of things really helped. I've heard people use the comb method where you literally take a comb and you hold it and like the, the bristles part, you like squeeze into your hand and it kind of helps your brain like focus on that rather than the contractions which I think is kind of cool. Breathing techniques, having that mental toughness of just being like surrendering, which is is so hard because like your body, like natural reaction is to want to like tense up and be like, oh my gosh, this hurts so bad. But it's like focusing on just trying to loosen up your face, loosen up the muscle tension in your body. Because believe it or not, when you're like tense up in your face and you're like trying to push, you're going to be tense down there. So focusing on just like relaxing, that was one of the things I learned in my class is like relaxing your jaw, relaxing your face muscles, and just like focusing on a, like almost like going through your body, like, okay, you know, are my eyebrows relaxed? Is my forehead relaxed? Is my cheeks relaxed? My jaw, my shoulders, like kind of just like working your way down the body is kind of what I did. And also like deep breathing out. So rather than be like, Trying to be like, ah, like that high, like tense when you're, when you're going through the contractions that can also like not make you be relaxed. So a lot of times, like what I would do is when I was breathing, I'd be like, ah, like uh, that deep low. And they didn't always work. Sometimes I went through some contractions and I was like, like so worked up about it. It's like, it was hard to get through them. It was hard. And the craziest thing is I would do it all over again. <laughs> A big thing too is also having your partner with you and having them just like be by your side. I did not want Dagan to leave my side the entire time that I was giving birth. So having that support and knowing that I have that person by my side kind of helped me get through it. So this question kind of ties into how you stay relaxed, but what are some things that you use to help you get through labor 
and contraction. I would say the number one thing that helped me just because I had back labor was using a heating pad. I used that sucker all through my entire laboring process when I was on the toilet, when I was in the bed, when I was pushing. Um, I had that thing wrapped around my back and it really brought me a lot of relief. It didn't take away the pain by any means, but it helped really bring some relief. Also laboring in a birthing pool, if you're in the hospital and your suite has a bathtub and you can labor in that, I highly suggest trying to get into the tub with warm water, even in the shower and letting the water run on your back was really helpful. So when I was laboring, like I said, I was in the pool a lot. Dagan would be pouring like water on my back. Another thing that helped was like, I can't remember what the proper term is, but there is like something that your partner could do or your team can help you with where you're going through those contractions and it's like a hip squeeze where they literally take like the back part of your hips kind of like, I want to say like near your butt and they push and squeeze really, really tight and it kind of counteracts that pressure. So that can really help. I've seen people, um, there's methods where you can take like a band and kind of put it under your waist and your partner's kind of bent over a ball or something or leaning on the bed or a counter and they can kind of lift your hips and that helps release that pressure. Sometimes if I was overheating or I needed to cool off because my birthing pool was for whatever reason really hot. So I had a cold washcloth over my face. You can put like an eye patch over your eyes, especially if you're in a hospital and you have the bright lights and you just kind of want to zone out, put an eye patch over your eyes so you're not having to like deal with the bright lights and you can kind of be in a more relaxed state. Music, that helped. Find yourself a playlist of some relaxing tunes or music that makes you happy. My twinkly lights, you can, I don't know if you can see them on my bed frame, but I strung up twinkly lights all around my room so I didn't have to have bright lights and it was very just like an ambiance that just kind of like helped me feel like in a more relaxed state. Oils, lots and lots of oils. I used so much Arnica oil. Look up Arnica oil and use that not only when you're going through labor, but through your pregnancy. Highly, highly recommend using Arnica oil and you or your partner giving you a perineal, perineal massage down there and really working on stretching out those muscles. I know because I was so tight down there, my doctor had to like use some arnica oil and really help like she would, basically when I was having a contraction trying to push, she would help stretch out the muscles, which I know I said that like labor was more intense than pushing out, but I think her trying to stretch out the muscles was even more intense than that. Essential oils to help you kind of relax if you need to, lavender, eucalyptus. Okay, this one's a common question, but did you poop? <laughs> No, I didn't surprisingly. I was expecting to like fall on past turd when I was giving birth, but I didn't. I think that's because I had a bowel movement earlier in the day, so I was pretty like cleaned out. It's common for women though to poop during labor and honestly like I feel like a lot of people are worried about that or they're gonna feel embarrassed if they poop in front of people, but in the moment you are not gonna probably realize that you've pooped and you're not gonna care because you're going through so many other things. The last thing on your mind is like, did I poop? And if you do, like, who cares? It's it's not a big deal because whoever is helping you through birth, whether that be your OBGYN or a midwife or, or whoever, they've seen it probably a thousand times, so they're not gonna care. So I, I really wouldn't worry about that. Next question is, what is the ring of fire like? You know, to be honest, I don't remember. <laughs> Like I said, I think dealing with my contractions and having my doctor do my perineal stretches when I was trying to push was so intense and having my back labor was so intense that to me the ring of fire didn't seem that bad and I don't remember feeling it. I mean, I probably did, but looking back, it's not something that I remember is like, oh my gosh, that was so painful. Basically the ring of fire is like when your baby is like crowning and you're like, you're being stretched to the max. I don't remember what it feels like. I really don't for some reason. I do remember though when she was crowning and I didn't realize that she was crowning and my team was like, her head's right there. And I remember Dagan, he was sitting next to me on the bed and he was like, oh my gosh, her head's like coming out. I can see her head. And for some reason I was thinking like, you could see her head from like the inside of me, but I didn't realize like, like her head was like, <laughs> Her head was like sticking out and I had reached it down and I had like literally like felt the top of her head and I was like, like there's a picture which I can't post because I'm, just, I am exposed. But <laughs> there's a picture of me reaching down and I'm like, because I couldn't believe her head was like crowning out. And, and I remember saying to my doctor, like, how many more pushes until she can come out? Because I was so excited. I, I guess that was the mo moment of the ring of fire, but I don't remember it hurting. I remember if anything adrenaline being excited because I couldn't believe she was coming out. 
So I know that's not very helpful, um, but that was just my experience with the Ring of Fire. Every time I talk about the Ring of Fire, I think of Finding Nemo and they're like, the Ring of Fire! I always think about that scene and they're like, isn't there another way? He's just a boy! <laughs> Next question is, how long did you push? Gosh, I felt like I was pushing for an eternity. Which looking back, I wish I wouldn't have pushed so much because I really felt like my labor was seven hours and I felt like I was almost pushing like that whole seven hours. I wasn't, but it felt like I was pushing a lot. And I think it was also because I was learning how to push. If you haven't given birth before, it's a real learning curve to figure out the right way to push. It's almost like you have to have the mindset like you're trying to take a poop when you push. But I feel like I was trying to push so much um, that I really like strained myself. I was very exhausted. Looking back, I wish I would have kind of let my body go through the motions a little bit more and kind of like push when I felt like I needed to push. I felt like I was kind of almost force pushing through my contractions sometimes because my team was encouraging me to. And I don't think that was because like they were not knowledgeable about when I was supposed to be pushing, but my team knew that I had back labor. I didn't realize I had back labor because I didn't know what that was at the time until afterwards. But I think they were trying to coach me to like push because they realized how intense that feeling was. And I think they wanted to like, just like get me out of that discomfort. They wanted me to just like get through it rather than having me suffer any longer. But I almost wish I would have let my body do its thing more rather than forcing it because it did at times feel a little bit forced, if that makes sense. How did you avoid tearing? I'm so scared it will hurt. Well, I didn't avoid tearing. I did tear. I, to be honest, don't know my degree of tear. I didn't ask my doctor. She didn't tell me. It was one of those things where it's like, well, it already happened. What good is it gonna do if I know how much I tore, I guess? She did have to do stitches, so I probably did have a significant tear. Okay, I ran out of room on my camera, so I had to delete some footage. Anyways, what I was saying though is I did tear a little bit on the lower part, and so I did have to get stitches, but I didn't feel anything because my doctor put lidocaine down there so I didn't feel a thing. I did feel one poke at one point because I don't know if it didn't sit for long enough or she just didn't put enough in that one area so she put some more down there. I didn't feel a thing so make sure that like make sure they numb you up because I feel like sometimes like women don't get numbed up and I think that is oh that's just so that's so wrong. So advocate for yourself be like hey I need some numbing stuff down there and let them know if you can feel it and whatnot. I don't really have any advice as far as like how do you avoid tearing because obviously I did tear. My one thing is I I wish I would have done more perineal massages throughout my pregnancy. I feel like that would have helped get some arnica oil or jojoba oil and just practice like really stretching out those muscles. I am an overall very tense person in my pelvic region so that's one thing that like I wish I would have worked more on but that's my only advice that I can give you as far as like not tearing. Do a lot of massages. This was another question, same, but it's kind of like the last one, did getting stitches hurt? No, it didn't hurt because my doctor put lidocaine down there so I was completely numb. So make sure you ask for lidocaine if they try to stitch you without any, like speak up and say something because that is excruciating and no woman should have to go through that. What's it like to birth your placenta and did you consume it? <laughs> uh, birthing your placenta, it's kind of almost like, well, it's a lot easier than birthing a child out, but it's kind of just like you're birthing like a big blood clot I want to say like it just feels like a big like blob coming out of you and usually it should come a couple like minutes after you give birth I honestly don't remember the time frame of when I birthed mine and I literally just gave like maybe like two little pushes and it kind of just like plopped right out oh and the other question is did I consume it yes I did <laughs> to gross some people out. Some people get it encapsulated into pills. I did not. I ate the thing raw. I know, I'm gonna gross so many people out by saying that. I didn't eat the whole thing. I didn't like take a chunk out of it. My team prepared it afterwards and they cut it like, I wanna say like 12 little pieces, like small little pieces up. And I just, cause I, I bled a lot afterwards. And so generally when you consume your placenta that helps with postpartum bleeding. So I consumed mine and I would just like drink it back with some juice or something. So I couldn't really taste it. And it wasn't really all that bad. I still need to bury ours. I know a lot of people when you're in the hospital, you, they just like throw it away. You can also request to take your placenta with you from the hospital if you didn't know that. So if you want to do something with it, ask to take it home with you because they cannot keep your placenta. That is your, yours to have. But I plan on burying it. A big thing in Hawaiian culture and Polynesian culture is to bury your placenta and plant like a tree 
or like a flower bush or something over it. Obviously we are renting our home so we can't do that, but I am gonna probably just like bury it in the ground here and it'll disintegrate. So right now it's just sitting in our freezer. <laughs> The next question is, is there anything that you would change about your birth? To, I mean, this sounds cliche, but I would not change a thing about my birth. And for the main reason that I birthed a beautiful, healthy baby girl, nothing went wrong. I didn't have to transfer. It went the best way that it possibly could. So I wouldn't change anything about it. What I would say is for my next birth, there were some things that I would maybe want to try differently like if i were to get pregnant and give birth again in hawaii i would use my same exact team they were amazing i love my doctor in every way possible she is phenomenal she is so knowledgeable on birth and just postpartum and pregnancy and everything and i felt like i learned so much from her and she also just like gave me the freedom to make my own decisions and like with the fact of equipping me with knowledge and being like this is what happens if you do this or this is what happens if you do this or you have the option to do this if you go into a hospital or you can do this and I just felt like I had so much empowerment to make my own decisions with having her on my team so I would use her all over again. I would say the thing that I would do differently though is maybe have a doula because I feel like there were some times where I struggled to get through contractions and whatnot and my team is very hands-off like my doctor was very hands off, which I loved, but I felt like I wish I would have had a little bit more support, I guess. And that, that sounds like bad, like they weren't doing their job or anything. That's not the case because they did everything that they could. And they actually did help me a lot through my contractions and whatnot. But I wish I would have had a, do a doula who's like, that is literally their job to help you get through contractions, to advocate for you, to be like, hey, let's try this or let's, let's do this. And really just like their main focus is on you. And like I said, that that makes it sound like my team like didn't focus on me or wasn't helping me and that's not the case because they did try different things with me. They were like, hey, let's do these other things. But I don't know, I just wish I would have had a doula to kind of like help me get through those contractions because my husband did help me a lot too. But I mean, he's not a doula, he's not a birth worker, so he doesn't know what to do or he doesn't say like, see like me struggling in this aspect and be like, okay, this is what I need to do to help her get through it. So I wish I just would have just had that extra equipped person with knowledge to help me get through that. And so I, I kind of want to have a doula next time. And I also wish I would have maybe tried the combing technique. I've heard that really can help for me next time. I really want to focus on opening up my hips more, stretching. I feel like I, I did work on like walking and stretches, but because I'm so tight, I still really struggle with opening up my hips and so I feel like that didn't allow me to really get into the positions that I wanted to get into or that I could have gotten into to help me birth in the birthing pool because I did end up giving birth on my back in my bed which was the last thing that I wanted to do but my body just really struggled to open up and I feel like I needed to take it upon myself more to really work on that. Also I would have liked to maybe take like a class on whether that's like hypnobirthing or focusing on like different breathing techniques. I didn't feel like I was really prepared in that aspect like I knew things but I didn't really have a game plan I guess going into birth. I kind of just like I like knew things but I kind of also winged it and next time I would like to have more of like a Oh, I'm going through this. Let me try this. It was more of like, I was looking to people to be like, what do I do? You know, type of thing. So I guess on my part, taking more accountability, I'm being a little bit more prepared. Okay. The last question is, this isn't really a question, but a word of encouragement. I am about to give birth soon. And all I can say is mama, you have got this. You are more than capable of doing this. You are strong. You your body is literally created to give birth. God literally created our bodies as women to be able to do this. Your body knows what to do, trust in it. You are more than capable, you are strong. You have got this. It is the most beautiful thing. It is, I'm not gonna lie, it's intense, it's brutal, but that moment that your baby comes out and is placed on your chest is the most amazing feeling in the entire world. And I wish I could relive it over and over again, as weird as that sounds, but just know that you are more than capable and equipped to do anything and you are, strong and it is the coolest feeling to be able to say I gave birth like I am a superhero it's it's so incredible no matter how you decide to give birth no matter if you just choose to do an epidural or do it naturally you're amazing you're strong and you are a badass so that is my word of encouragement that is it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I answered these questions to the best of my ability and this helped you out at all if I missed any questions or you're like hey I'm wondering about this please let me know in the comments. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Sometimes I feel like I 
stumble over my words and I start talking and then I look back at the footage and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have said that instead or added that to it. So hopefully I got everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I am going to try and do the postpartum video as soon as I can. I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because I know it's going to be a very vulnerable video for me to open up about and talk about. But like I said, I do think it's very important to share and um, be able to tell my story because not enough women, I think, have the knowledge about it. And I just think it's a very important topic. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.